Welcome back to another Division 2 build guide. I'm Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and in today's upload, I am going to show you my Pyromaniac version 2.0 build. And this is absolutely insane for area of effect and crowd control. But before we begin, if you haven't yet smashed that sub button for intensive Division content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. All right, let's get this pyro build guide started. Back in March, I posted my first pyro build guide. And while it was fun and worked quite well, it is nothing compared to how strong this new version can be. So here is the build overview. And I am using four pieces of Eclipse Protocol, one piece of China Light, and one piece of Wyvern Wear, along with the Survivalist Specialization and the Burn Sticky Bomb and Firestarter Chem Launcher. Don't worry, I will show you all the pieces in detail and give you the explanations as to each, but when this pyro build is up and running, it can easily tear through heroic level NPCs either solo or in a four-man group. So let me first start off with the gear, and I am using Eclipse Protocol for the body armor, backpack, gloves, and knee pads. Now this new gear set always comes with a core attribute of skill tier, and then I have recalibrated the attribute to status effects on each of these gear pieces. The reason I am using Eclipse Protocol is for the talents. The two piece gives us plus 15% status effects, the three piece plus 15% skill haste and 30% hazard protection, and the four piece activates indirect transmission, which reads, your status effects now spread on kill to all enemies within 15 meters and refresh 50% of the duration. Remember that within status effects there are two mechanics at work, duration and damage. So when we have high levels of this attribute, our fire skills will do more damage and last for longer, which is what we are going for. For this pyro build guide, I'm only going to dive into the body armor and backpack for the protocol pieces. And by wearing the body armor, it activates a further talent of proliferation. This increases indirect transmission range from 15 to 20 meters and refreshes percentages from 50 to 75%. You could think of this talent concept as creeping death, but on steroids. Now the idea here is to get everything set on fire as quickly as possible, and once an enemy dies of the flame damage, it will spread to any enemies within 20 meters and will refresh the flame status effects for 75% of their original uptime. So if you had a burn duration of 10 seconds on your fire starter chem launcher, once the fire spreads via indirect transmission to targets within 20 meters, it would then burn those targets for an additional 7.5 seconds and so on. To finish off the body armor, I am using a skill haste mod. For the backpack, I have recalibrated this protocol piece to have a max status effect attribute and have again finished it off with a skill haste mod. By equipping the backpack, I activate the Symptom Aggravator talent that amplifies all damage you deal to status affected targets by 15%. Now notice it says Amplifies, so this is a multiplicative damage modifier and adds this bonus to whatever method of damage I use against my targets. And this will pair nicely with our specialization, which I will cover shortly. For the mask, I am using China Light with skill damage and status effect attributes along with a skill haste mod. Now, explosive damage is applied to targets when the burn sticky bomb explodes, and it can add a little extra pop when you first hit targets. For the holster, I am using Wyvern Wear, along with status effects and skill damage attribute rolls. I know that my mask and knee pad selections may seem odd, but through extensive testing at the AOE portion of the range, this is the combo that did the most damage per tick over the longest period of time. I tried using the Imperial Dynasty holster, Golden knee pads with status effects, and what felt like a hundred different combinations of protocol and brand sets, and this is the setup I seem to always come back to. Now you could really use whatever you want for gear, as long as you have four pieces of protocol while using that gear set's body armor and backpack. Even with just using the three skill haste mods, I don't find myself ever without the use of one of my skills, so I would suggest not specking into haste attributes or brand sets with skill haste as it is really not needed. For this pyro build, I recommend using the survivalist specialization, and I know it may seem odd, especially when you initially look at the others, but let me explain. Survivalist grants the use of the incendiary grenades gives us extra protection from elites, because this build is quite squishy, and also gives us tactical link and crunch time. 
Tactical Link gives us 10% bonus damage to targets with status effects, and this applies to all members of the squad, including yourself, while Crunch Time gives us 10% skill haste while in cover, which we will do a lot with this build. In addition, the signature weapon crossbow bolts are clutch for destroying a tank's armor, which is really the only NPC type that could give us problems with this build. You still could use the Demolitionist, Tactician, or Firewall specs, but I have tried them all, and Survivalist is the best. For the weaponry, I am using the named SIG 556, the mechanical animal most of the time, and this is because of the high base damage and the future perfection weapon talent. Now since our build is already at skill tier 6, when we do get a weapon kill, our skills will go onto overcharge for 15 seconds, and this can happen once every 90 seconds. Needless to say, our skills are already quite strong, but once they hit overcharge, they become mental for 15 seconds. I felt it important to note that I am using a mechanical animal with damage to armor as the attribute as it applies to our burn effects versus armored targets. For the mods, I am using crit chance muzzle and underbarrel mods along with a crit damage optic and the 20 round extended mag. For the secondary weapon, the named Pyromaniac pairs nicely with this build concept for the extra plus 25% damage versus targets that are burning. For the skills, I am using the Burn Sticky Bomb with Damage and Duration mods and the Firestarter Chem Launcher with Skill Haste and Damage mods. Now I'm guessing you can see how this build concept works. The whole idea is to get enemies on fire as quickly as possible through the Sticky Bomb and Chem Launcher, and once they die from the flame effects, the real fun begins, as the four-piece protocol talent of indirect transmission will spread the flame effects to nearby targets and refresh most of the burn duration. Mix in mechanical animal kills for the overcharge effect to really get things cooking, sorry about the bad pun, and once everything is on fire, just relax and let the status effects do their thing. Now, I have not tried this build on Legendary Difficulty, but I do know it will struggle versus Black Tusk Tech, but on Heroic Missions, either solo or in a full squad, this build absolutely melts anything in its way. I'm going to end this one right here, and as always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash that sub button for intensive Division content and ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. Links to support my full-time content creation include Patreon and Teespring, both in the video description. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming, including all my latest announcements and alerts. And remember to stay tuned for clips of me using this exact build on Heroic Difficulty missions. Until the next one, this is Lt. Buzz Lightbeer, signing off. is a collection of transcripts and notes from months of prisoner interrogations. Information stored on a military-grade laptop, kept in the main holding area downstairs. The first priority is to release the prisoners to keep the true sons busy. You'll be looking for some kind of security terminal. The security terminal should be somewhere nearby. Look around. Promising. Find it and patch eyes again. Okay, I'm in. Now to open the cells. And the cells are open. Stairs. Get moving.
true sons seem to be in control of the holding area. The hyenas are knocking out security cameras. Pretty smart of them. Enforcements en route. assistance needed. Just lost the camera feed from the holding area. There was a bright flash and then static. Serious trauma detected. up on camera again. The holding area is just ahead. Once you find that laptop, grab it and get the hell out of there. Science critical. Looks like you got True Sun's reinforcements headed your way. North or south side? Both. Heavier concentration to the south. With all those gates sealed, the north exit should be closer. <laughs>
trying to break through. No more contact. All clear. You just recovered intel that's going to be a whole lot of help to Odessa in the short term, but to all of us in the long run, you also effectively put this hellhole out of commission. 